must say your resume looks very impressive, Mr. Rodriguez. It's very good. I think you're more than qualified to work for the nighttime position at Freddy Bass Bear Pizza. Whoa, that's awesome! Now, sorry, that would be honest though. I don't really have much experience being a security guard, but I really need the job. I mean, I really need the money. Times are very tough. So, um, what exactly do I do at this job? It's really quite simple. All you would have to do is keep an eye on every one of the security cameras, make sure everything's intact, make sure everything's in place. Remember, we're also trying to save some money to the company. You know, you do not want to waste too much electricity. And one final note, please take good care of Freddy and his friends. They are very expensive to the company. Well, yeah, I can handle that. Good. When can you start? Well, I can actually do it tonight. Excellent. Then you're hired. All right, sir. So before I get started, is there anything else I should know about this job? No, nothing at all. I'll see you tonight. This is Mark Rodriguez. Johnny Rodriguez. And you're watching another epic episode of the Video Game Masters. And this show we're going to do something a little different. We're actually talking about a horror game, but it's something that we don't talk about too often. And yes, this particular horror series has become incredibly popular in just one year's time. It already has three sequels. There's a Hollywood movie coming out soon, or during the stages of making and everything. But yes, this game has gotten so popular, everyone's talking about it, everyone's heard about it, you just had to play it. It got my morbid curiosity to try it out. I did not want to play this game. It was so creepy that I couldn't even download Steam for a couple of weeks because I knew that I was getting Steam for the purpose of that game. And yes, if you've seen the channel, I've played it. Johnny's played, played it. it. Yes, Paige has played it. My coworkers have played it and all that stuff. So in this episode, before all the big sequels in the movie and all that stuff comes out, we're going to take a quick look at the original game that started all just last year, the very first Five Nights at Freddy's. Let's check it out. Welcome to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, a magical place for kids and grown-ups alike, where fantasy and fun come to life. Fazbear Entertainment is not responsible. Five Nights at Freddy's is an indie survival horror game that actually plays the new security guard at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, based heavily on Chuck E. Cheese, which also has its own animatronics. Your job is to check the security cameras from midnight to 6 a.m., but what they don't tell you is that the animatronics are free to walk around at night, and if they see you, they'll kill you. This is a pretty straightforward point-and-click game. You can't really walk around or leave the room. All you do is click on the different cameras and check all the rooms at the pizzeria to make sure that Freddy and his buddies are in their place. Once you move around, you also check the cameras to see how close or how far they are from you. You can also shut the doors to keep them out, or you can check the door lights to see if anyone's creeping around right outside. You also have a guy on the phone that calls you every night to give you some information on what's going on. Now in case you're wondering why not just keep the door shut the whole time, you also have a limited amount of electricity to work with. Every time you use the doors, the lights, and yes, even the cameras, it uses up power. What, what am I supposed to do? Just keep my doors locked? No, because you have to save power. Look at your power percent down there. But the, but the things are like escaping everywhere. That's why. Right. You have to know when to have them open and when to have them closed. What? I can't... Nope. If the power runs out before 6 a.m., everything goes dark, the doors automatically open, and Freddy is free to get you. The main enemies are Freddy and his pals. Bonnie comes at you from the left and basically can appear there at any time. Chica appears on your right, but not as often, however she does seem to stay there a lot longer than Bonnie does. Foxy is in Pirate's Cove and depending on how often you check or don't check on him, he'll dash right at your door. Freddy himself attacks on later nights unless the power runs out. He mostly hides in the darkest areas making him very hard to see and you have to keep track of his creepy laughter to know when he's moving. We also have the mysterious Golden Freddy who literally crashes the game if you don't look away from him fast enough. 
Now, being a survival horror game, you have no real way to defend yourself. All you can do is try to survive from 6 a.m. because once any of the animatronics enter your room, it's instant game over and they get you with a jump scare. Cue the jump scares. One thing that made the Final Fantasy Freddy's game so popular, other than the jump scares of course, is the lore behind the series. The phone guy tells you that animatronics are attacking you because they think that you're an endoskeleton without a suit on, so they stuff you into a spare Freddy suit which ends up killing you due to all the sharp devices still inside. However, you do see hints and clues in the game that explain how a formal security guard and a Freddy suit killed 5 children in the restaurant some time ago, and the bodies were never found. The animatronics are haunted by these kids and not to kill you on purpose because they think that you're the security guard. Now even though the game has 3 sequels, this is still the most important game in the series because everything seems to lead up to this point. Final Fantasy Freddy's Part 2 and 4 are both revealed to be prequels to this game with more hints and clues as to what happened here. And even though Final Fantasy Freddy's 3 does take place 30 years after this game, there are still mini games with hints and clues about the Fred Bear Family Diner, a restaurant that existed before the franchise was renamed to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. This series has more and more mysteries and it seems that every question that gets answered, more questions keep popping up. Like most indie games that became big, Final Fantasy Freddy's also became huge due to the big name YouTubers like Markiplier and Game Theorists, either by their gameplay reaction videos or by their own videos with theories as to how all the clues and hints match up. In fact, YouTube is packed with videos with everyone out there having their own thoughts and theories on how the game's lore works. And yes, there's an actual movie coming out, and we even have Jim Henson's Creature Shop, the same guys who did the turtle costumes in the first two movies in the 90s, working on animatronics to make them as realistic and as creepy as possible. Alright guys, so now for us in the game, and in my opinion, yes, the game is very creepy, and it is pretty scary at some times, and I know that the game is basically a low budget game, it's just a bunch of pictures, you know, from all the stuff I heard about it, when I actually got to see the game, I was surprised that the animatronics were just basically just standing there in the pictures. I mean, Foxy's the only one that we actually see running. The other ones are just standing here, standing there. I'm like, well, don't they move? I'm kind of surprised. But, it, but somehow, somehow it still pulls it off. It has a very good, creepy atmosphere. And especially when you have your headphones on. It really gives you the idea that you really are the security guard at the Boss Bear's Pizza. And that you're really there with them. And you hear the creepy sounds and noises, the footsteps, random music. Say, why is your music playing? It's midnight. There should not be no music playing in the background. And they get closer and closer and all that stuff. And of course, the big jump scare at the end, that's the part that gets you. Because sometimes, I mean, sometimes you're expecting it. Other times, you're not expecting it at all. It just comes out of nowhere. And it's like, it is. It is a very creepy game. And the animatronics are creepy as fuck. To, to look at even, even something that you would think that simple like oh there's a there's a cutesy bunny looking at the door no that's a creepy looking bunny looking at the door that does creep you out you know so um yeah that's what makes the game more addicting too it's the backstory and just the overall creepy feel like if you really are stuck in that place at the midnight hours what did you think Johnny well when I think about the game this is the first time I played this type of game you know, like a horror game, and um, I think that the overall feel of the game is that it's very, um, there's like a huge fear factor because you don't know when these things are going to show up. Uh, you have to always be timing when to close the doors, when to check the cameras to see which rooms they're in. It's, it's really scary shit, and, and when they actually um, get you, you know, you feel like a failure, like how the hell did I, you know, how the hell did, how, how the hell did that happen? Like, like, it's just like, it's crazy. And then, and you know, it's a kind of game that personally, I really wouldn't like to keep just for the fact that it's something that I feel like I'm going to be stuck on a stage and I'm not going to be able to over pass that stage. So, you know, and it's, it's kind of scary actually. I did, I did not want to have those monsters like on the Freddy friends, you know, when they like oh, do that thing to you, I, I kind of, I, I, I kind of like cut that shit off. I do not want that shit on my computer. Yes. You know, to be honest, it's like. Yes. And to know. be fair, to be fair out there, I do know some people out there are, are not scared by the game or they've already played all the games. There are actually people 
that have played all four games, and by the time they got to the fourth game, it's like they're like, it's not even scary anymore, you know, stuff like that. But, um, yeah, for some people, especially for like us that we don't really play horror games, and this game does feel more realistic, like maybe it would not have been so scary if it was in a fictional place like hell or, or some weird other planet or some crap like that. But this is a fucking run down pizzeria that's very similar to any Chuck E. Cheese you'd even go today if you wanted. So it does kind of up the fear factor and how real it is. But like I said, and I of do course know it, it kind some of people out there probably brings not, questions but. like why is this company hiding all these facts? Why are they hiring people? Why are they still hiring people? I mean, if you hear uh, these rumors that, you know, people are dying over these, you know, things, these robots or whatever, it's like, why, why did that, why? There has to be some reason why they're keeping it under the cover. Ugh, random music, jump scare. Well, anyways, guys, before we answer that, this is, um, that's the end of this episode of Video Game Masters. That was not expected. This is Mark Rodriguez. Johnny Rodriguez. Thanks for watching. See you next time. And that better not be Freddy on that phone. Sorry, that position already has been filled. Whoa! Freddy! On second thought, a new position has just been opened. What can you come for your next interview?